Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Claret's Daily News here on Turfcast. And we'll start today with rumours of a potential, well, reports of a potential incoming at Burnley. It was reported uh, yesterday, obviously on Wednesday at around 7.57pm. I say around, that's pretty specific. I've obviously got the tweet up on my screen now. Um, by Pete O'Rourke and he believes that Nottingham Forest midfielder Lewis O'Brien is weighing up loan offers from Sheffield United, Burnley or LAFC decision expected soon. Now, like I said, that was reported by Pete O'Rourke. Now, Pete O'Rourke is uh, not the most reliable in the world, I think is the best way of saying it. Um, I've criticised on here before plenty of times Football Insider 24-7 to the point where I don't even tweet any Football Insider 24-7 reports and rumours because I just I just know they're a load of rubbish and that's where Pete works. I think he's their main guy. So no disrespect to Pete, but you know, there's more more reports from them that don't happen or didn't ever look like they were going to happen than there are correct ones. There obviously are examples of correct ones, I'm sure, somewhere. Um, but then after that, interestingly, now I know again a lot of people criticise Nixon and I agree, I understand why people do. But then Nixon picked it up as well. And because it's come from two different places, I believe... Anyway, what Nixon said was this, though. Nixon had a different angle on it. Alan Nixon reckons that Nottingham Forest will be loaning out Lewis O'Brien with Sheffield United and MLS side LAFC in the hunt. Now, he goes on to say that, like I said, he will be getting loaned out. But he does say that Sheffield United have been on his tail for some time and expecting them to make a strong pitch it says in an article which on his article sorry which you can obviously see on your screen now um, but it, it's it's the latter the last paragraph in Nixon's report that kind of tells me that it's it's there or thereabouts that it's going to be Sheffield United or LAFC he says Burnley are also watching developments but currently have a large squad and may have to move some out first now I did speak to somebody who just who said the loan bid? The the person I spoke to said the loan bid is is false, and that was obviously what Pete O'Rourke says. So according to Pete O'Rourke, we have made an offer for him on loan. Apparently, that's a load of rubbish. I from from what from what I've heard from certain people, I would suspect that it's Nixon's report is 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 the, is the one to be trusted here. I never thought I'd say that, um, but Nixon's report is the one to be trusted more here, um, just because it sounds to me like we are kind of like watching from the sidelines, looking what's going to happen if 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 he's available in two three weeks when, God forbid, Sander Berg isn't a Burnley player anymore, we then might make a move. But for now, it's looking like that that we're not really that interested, just kind of seeing what happens. And like I said, if he's available in a few weeks, if he hasn't gone to Sheffield United or LAFC, then we may make a bid. But if LAFC are interested in him, I mean, it depends on what on what he wants in his career, right? Because he, he, he is uh, still quite young. He's only 25, I believe. But obviously... If it's only a loan, I guess a loan in the MLS would be good, and he gets to live in the LA in LA. Sorry for for a year. I mean, where would you rather live, Burnley Wood or LA? I know it's Burnley Wood. I'm obviously only joking, but it's it's interesting that um, we're kind of just watching from the sidelines, like I said, and it appears to me that this is essentially the Sanderberg contingency plan. I've said a million times on this show, I'd be f very surprised if Sanderberg is a Burnley player come the end of the window. However. It all seems a little quiet on Sander at the minute, apart from the Fenerbahce links, which I'm not for one second suggesting that they come true. But other than the Fenerbahce links, it is quite quiet on Sanderberg, and I don't suspect he'll be going to Fenerbahce. I don't suspect he'll be going to anywhere in the Turkish league. I think he holds out for a Premier League move, and if a Premier League move doesn't come in, who knows? He might end up staying with Burnley. But yeah. Looking like we're kind of just watching the Lewis O'Brien thing from the sidelines. And if Sander does move on, then we might make a move on him. But who knows? He might end up playing for LAFC or Sheffield United before then.
Now, we mentioned yesterday that Burnley were playing in a behind-closed-doors friendly against Newcastle United up at the Newcastle United training ground, and it actually was quite difficult to, to get the result. It, it was banded about that we... Originally, it was banded about that we won 9-1, but that came from the Newcastle side of things. I think everybody associated with Burnley Football Club was just looking at that and thinking, yeah, that's rubbish, we obviously didn't win 9-1. Uh, but then it was reported that Burnley won 1-0, I believe that is also BS. Apparently, from what I believe, Burnley won the match 3-2. I've put it out on Twitter now. Um, I did originally, like I said, there were, there were so many different scores being banded about by people who were just seeing it reported elsewhere online and then picking it up and then and running with it. And obviously, that's why I stayed clear of it on the Turfcast Twitter because it, it never really felt like it was coming from a good source. Uh, and that's why I left it until this morning. I did see a couple of Newcastle accounts actually tweet last night saying it was 3-2, so they obviously got the information pretty early. Um, I didn't dive on it then until I had it confirmed from somewhere decent that it was 3-2, and it turns out that Burnley did win the match 3-2. Um, I believe it was a case of you know, over a, a couple of pitches. Again, I can't remember it, uh, what the exact words were, um, but I believe it was kind of like over a couple of different pitches or or roll on roll off subs i think i think the exact wording was three times 45 minutes with everybody getting you know at least a certain amount but i can't remember what that was so it sounds like it wasn't a 90 minute match it was obviously like a 135 minute match with with roll on roll off subs i imagine um that was the case with the subs but from what i believe it was three halves well obviously you can't get three halves but you know what i mean three 45 minutes of um, of action with each player getting a certain amount of minutes. I'm going to be a little bit brave here. Now, there's a goal going round on uh, Twitter and, uh, and Instagram, and it's Manuel Benson's goal. He he scored, apparently this is the winner, he scored this goal in the game yesterday. I'm going to put it on your screen now. Now, like I said, I'm being a little bit brave here because obviously this is a bit of action and YouTube may see this and uh, and and demonetize me and, and count it as a strike. However... This is obviously there's no rights on this, um, and it's doing the rounds on Twitter. Um, so you know, if 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 somebody had sent me this and said don't don't put it anywhere, obviously I wouldn't do that. But it's it's come out there for, on Twitter. That was Manuel Benson's goal, and I believe Burnley won the match three two. But it, it it was heavily youngsters from the Newcastle side, I believe. So it's people getting excited about beating Newcastle. I mean, number one results do not matter a jot in pre-season it's literally just about minutes in the legs um but yeah Newcastle apparently did play a lot of youngsters but it's good to see Manmo Benson doing what he does best that's what he does he gets the ball on the right hand side he drops a shoulder he cuts in and he pings it at top bins him not getting anywhere near as many minutes uh, as he should have done last season is criminal I understand and I know a lot of people um associated with the company and associated with the club said it in interviews, that he wasn't strong enough and uh, and stuff like that for the Premier League. They know more than me. Obviously, they're seeing week in, week out in training. But I am so excited to see Manuel Benson, hopefully, a lot more this season in a claret and blue shirt. Hopefully, pinging it top bins a lot more this season, just like he did in the year we won the championship. But yeah, Burnley beat Newcastle 3-2 in that friendly. Yeah, that's pretty much it from me for today's show. Not a great deal out there at the minute, but it's always good to, to try and keep you guys all up to date with it. Um, Lewis O'Brien, would would he be a good signing? Like, is it, he's, He is a central midfielder, so I do feel like he is a contingency plan for if Sander Burge leaves. But if Sander Burge does leave, I would suspect that would be two, three, four weeks yet. So he may have may or already not have already gone to Sheffield United or LAFC. That's obviously Lewis O'Brien. Um, but yeah, good to see Manuel Benson back amongst the goals, even if it is just a friendly. But we know he has that in his locker we know that he can get it on the right hand side ping it in the top bins every single time after cutting in on his left so yeah good to see uh, we'll be back tomorrow it will be a little bit later tomorrow I'm saying that like I'm not recording today's show at, at, at three o'clock it's obviously getting later and later it is the school holidays at the minute so the show times might be a little bit all over the place but just for those of you that are quite new obviously I know I've only just recently released it as a podcast I do try and get the shows out quite early but on Fridays, it's later, and sometimes it just has to be a little bit later. And I think the summer holidays may see the times fluctuate quite a bit. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. But I'll definitely be back tomorrow, but it probably will be later on tomorrow because, as usual, I want to get Friday's news in ahead of the weekend because we don't do shows over the weekend. Then we're back on Monday. But thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks, everybody, for listening, and I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>